Hello and welcome to another trip report. This time from Oslo Central Station. And I'll be taking a train to the along the Bergensbahn. And this train will go from Oslo to Bergen, the second city of Norway. Today I won't be traveling all the way to Bergen though. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that when I use a voice over. What I do like in basically all my videos, I show you the station where I'm departing from, I show you the train and I show you some views from the train. Maybe I'll do something like I explain the route a little bit along, I don't know, I will see maybe if I can do something different this video. For now, I hope you like this video or this is a helpful video to you, if so, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more trip reports about more sustainable ways of transportation, then hit the subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss anything, also hit the bell icon. I mean, you can always unsubscribe if you don't like it after all. But for now, let's just roll the intro. Before we dive into this, a quick comparison on the environmental impact if you're traveling by train, car and plane on this route. Of course, trains won't clean the air. However, in terms of carbon dioxide, you can travel 798 times by train to have the same carbon footprint as traveling one time by plane. The energy resources, so basically the kilowatt hours, so the amount of energy that is needed for one train ride, is 96% lower than one flight. However, because the energy resources for trains are much more sustainable, the total carbon footprint is way lower than taking a plane. Trains are in general the more sustainable way of transportation, but in this specific situation, the resources that are being used for energy are also fully sustainable. But for now let's dive into this video. I arrived a day earlier in Oslo from Gothenburg by train. I am working for a Dutch railway related tour operator, so mainly making package deals, treinrondreis.nl and this trip is a part of a field trip. Because my planning for this trip was overall pretty tight, I did not spend a whole lot of time in Oslo. In a way it's a bit of pity though, because Oslo is a really nice city. Everything is very walkable over here, it's not a big city. However, there are also many things to discover on the outskirts of Oslo. There are so many islands around Oslo. Basically, you can just go island hopping and discover all these little islands. Or if you just prefer to take a sauna and to dive into the Oslo Fjord, <laughs> you can do that here as well. It's not even that far from the railway station. However, I'm sure you're not watching this video for a city guide of Oslo. So let's dive into this topic and let's discover Oslo Central Railway Station. Public transport in the Oslo region is very good. Apart from buses and trams, there's also a good metro system, but I'll show you this briefly in a bit. Until 1980, Oslo used to have two main railway stations, basically two terminal stations that were not connected with each other. However, in 1980 a tunnel opened under the city, making the East Railway Station the main railway station of Oslo. What used to be the East Railway Station is now a part of a shopping mall that is more or less integrated within the Central Railway Station. The current and new Central Railway Station is quite a big and modern railway station and this here used to be the old East Railway Station. Nowadays this is a food court where you find lots of good restaurants to be honest. Over here but also in a newer part of the railway station you find hotels that are integrated within the railway station. Next to the old railway station building where you find the food court there's also a terrace. I think it's really nice in the summertime though, but when I was here it was a bit chill. Before we hit inside the railway station let's discover a little bit more around it. At the side there's a small playground, you find a taxi stand and close to the taxi stand there's even a parking garage for both bikes and cars. I don't know if this is also a place where you can rent bikes, I didn't notice it. However, you can park your bike here and I think this is really neat. The metro of Oslo is indicated with the letter T. This basically stands for Tunnel Railway, if I literally translate it. The metro is really good integrated within the modern Central Railway Station building. And for now, I think it's time to discover that railway station. The new railway station that has been opened in the 1980s, so Oslo Central Railway Station, is huge. And this is not just a railway station. Also, several shopping malls have been integrated within this. So there's no shortage of shops at all. That's the least 
you could say. Apart from that, the railway station itself also hosts quite a lot of shops, but most shops here are a little bit more related to traveling, like for example currency exchange offices, lots of convenience stores and also railway related services. Directions have been marked crystal clear in both Norwegian and English and information about departing but also arriving trains has been marked very well throughout the railway station. Tracks 13 to 19 are a little bit more located at the side of the railway station and these are all terminal tracks. A little bit like the old situation before 1980. The other tracks with the lower platform numbers, these are all through tracks and from there on you can find trains that will go to all directions. At this part of the railway station, well, there's absolutely no shortage of shops as well. And there are quite a lot of 7-Elevens. With so many 7-Elevens, it feels like I'm back in Taiwan. Although the weather is not quite like the weather you can expect in Taiwan though. Well, you will find waiting rooms in Norway to keep warm in the winter time. And in Taiwan, you find waiting rooms to keep cool in the summertime. There was also a point where you can rent power banks. You need to register via an app and this didn't work for me. This app is not listed in the Dutch Play Store, so I think this is only related for Norwegians. About tickets, I strongly recommend you to buy your ticket in advance, but you'll find several vending machines for both the fly trains, the airport express trains and the regular trains at this station. If you go to the airport, the airport express trains are way pricier than the regular trains. The airport express trains, this is branded with the name Fly Target and the regular trains are branded with the name Entour. They both have vending machines and ticket counters. But I truly hope that if you watch this video you're convinced of flying as little as possible. So I hope you don't take a train from or to the airport. But if you go from or to the airport the train is at least the most sustainable way to do so. Of course you can switch between the different tracks and platforms via the concourse of this station. But at the platform itself you also find an underground passage that will link all the platforms with each other and will also link the railway tracks with the metro station. At last I think there's something I haven't shown you very well but I think it speaks for itself. There are quite some spots where you can comfortably wait for your train. Speaking of which I think it's about slowly time to move towards my train. These departure screens are the biggest departure and also arrival screens within this railway station. And I was quite early for my train. I like to be on time, so I'm not bothering other passengers at the moment I'm recording the interior of the train. But that was quite difficult, because my train was fully booked. If you're traveling on this route and the train has been fully booked, I'll give you some tips on how to book train tickets in a creative way. Before entering the platform you find these very clear displays that will host route information, departure time etc. And also the train composition. Exit to the platforms is via these gates and this feels really like an airport. This railway station feels like an airport in general I have to say. Before I'll show you the train I'll tell you something about this trip in general. This trip is a part of a greater journey where I traveled by train from the Netherlands to Kiel in northern Germany from where on I took an overnight ferry to Gothenburg in Sweden and continued my way by train to Oslo. I took Norway's fastest train but also the train that goes on the highest altitude in all of northern Europe. I traveled by bus and boat towards Flam from where on I took the famous Flamsbanen. This is the steepest railway in the world that is not using a cogwheel. And of course I also travel with more local trains. This all to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation and to lower your carbon footprint while traveling. I even took a bus that went on some ferries. And for the last train ride I took a train that called at Norway's most southern railway station. From the town of Kristiansand in the south of Norway I took a ferry back homebound towards the Netherlands. And of course I made trip reports on all of this. All related videos can be found in the description of this video on YouTube. And if they are not there yet just stay tuned. At the moment I went to the platform my train wasn't there yet. But not long after I arrived there my train was already coming in. My train is being pulled in by an Altrans locomotive type EL18 built in 1997 
and with a top speed of 200 km per hour, although this train won't go that fast on this route. Before I show the interior, but also the views from the train, let's take a quick look on the outside of the train. It has been clearly marked on what railway line these characters will be used. What is the Bergensbahn? What is the railway line between Oslo and Bergen? At the outside of all carriages, it has been clearly marked what carriage number is where and basic route information like the final destination but also some stops along the way will be displayed at mainly electric screens next to the entrance doors. Before you enter the platform but also at the platform there are clear screens that will hold route information as well and apart from that they find composition screens on these screens as well. These composition screens will refer to letters you can find at the platform, for example the letter D you can see right here, so you know more or less what carrots of the train will be where at the platform. For these specific trains tickets do always come, including a seat reservation, so you just go to the assigned seat first. Therefore, at the side of the train you won't find that much information about what facilities can be found where. These trains do come in general in one class only, but there's a little trigger and I'll show you this later on in the video. And apart from that, you will find special zones within these trains. At the moment I recorded this part of the video, I already dropped my luggage near my seat and I asked the passenger sitting right next to me if he can take a close eye on my luggage and that I went for a little wonder to film something. He did this, but I don't want the train to leave without me, so I just hopped on board and this is at the moment the train was leaving Oslo. I really like the views from the back of the train and therefore I really like locomotive hall trains. Normally I show you the train and after that I show you some views from the train, but this time I would do it slightly different, mainly to give you some background information about this stunning railway line. But I'll get back with facts a little bit later on, because we're in a tunnel now anyway, let's start with the train tour. Apart from the displays at the side of the train, at the moment you enter one carriage, the carriage number has also been written over here. These are long distance trains, so of course you'll find a lot of space for your luggage. Apart from the overhead luggage racks you find throughout the train, there are special luggage zones at the end of each open compartment. Most carriages do come in the same layout, and I will show you this first. Of course, not everything is the same, but I will show you the rest a little bit later on in the video, while I show you some views from the train. And this is how most carriages look like. They come in a 2x2 configuration, so two seats on both sides of the aisle. There are special pet free zones, so within these carriages it's strictly forbidden to travel with your pet. The seats in these carriages will be put in driving direction and you find mainly airline style seats, apart from some bay seats, so seats that do face each other, at the end of the carriages. This is ideal for if you prefer to travel within the driving direction. At the moment the seats do face each other, there's a small table between the seats at the side of the train, near the window. Seat numbers are located within the luggage racks, so you know what seat can be found where, and in the middle of these carriages there is a point where you can drop your garbage, and you can even recycle, what makes traveling by train even more sustainable. Time for a seat tour. Power plugs can be found right under the seats and all seats can be reclined. You find a handle right under the seat and at the side, and the leg room is pretty okay. I have to say I'm quite tall, I'm 1 meter 90. There's a small foot rest, a fold out table and a magazine rack. Reading lights are integrated within the luggage racks and all armrests are adjustable as well. Well there's not that much to adjust on it, but hey, you know what I mean. At the beginning and at the end of these carriages you find a toilet and these toilets are rather simple but they are quite clean during my trip at least and I think that's most important. At the beginning of the journey the train will go towards Drammen and this is officially not the Bergensbahn yet, that will be from Drammen. The first four railway stations including Oslo Central railway stations and Tilde railway station of Drammen can only be used to board these trains, you cannot get out at those stations. However you will find lots of local trains on this section of the route as well, so no need to worry about that. The first railway station where passengers can take off is Hunefoss.
the first section after you leave Oslo is definitely not the most scenic section of this railway line. However, the scenery becomes better and better, so no need to worry about that. The reason why I do a voiceover while I show you some views from the train and also show you some other parts of the train while I, well, show you the views from the train is because this is a really special railway line. The total length of the Bergensbahn is 471.25 km and you find a total of 182 tunnels. The longest one is 10.3 km. Apart from that, this railway line will have the highest altitude of all railway lines in Northern Europe. The highest point is 1237 meters above sea level. As I made my way through the train, I found a very special carriage. As I made my way through the train, I came in this luggage car. It is not just a luggage car because over here you find Couchette. These trains look very familiar to me, these, these carriages. And I ask around and my, what I thought seemed to be true. These are the old bike and luggage carriages of the city nightline, the German sleeper trains have had a quite a big network in all of Europe. Now they're being used for by carriages. Carriages you can store a lot of luggage over here. Yeah, I think they will also use I think they also use these carriages on the sleeper trains. There are some actual couchettes over here, so there's six berth uh, sleeper well, sleeping no, not sleeping but like lay down apartment and um, they're all occupied maybe I can sneak in one of them this one seems to be empty but these are just the old German sleeping carriages you can put a table out looks really nice I don't know if you need to book this separately or not but it's, it's really cool seat numbers up and over here no blankets are included though, but it's really nice. Within these sleeping carriages, there are even some washing facilities, although they are not that big as you might expect at Couchette sleeping carriages. The toilets in these carriages are slightly different, but also pretty fine. The railway line is mainly single track. There are some points where trains can pass each other, mainly at railway stations but also at some places in the middle of nowhere. For example here at the railway station of Aal. Apart from these passenger trains, there are quite some freight trains that will use this railway line as well. I made a brief stop here in Jailo. This is one of the famous winter spot towns here in Norway. Um, lots of people with skis also get out. Um, I just jumped in the train because we can depart any moment again. And even though at this point I'm already quite deep in the journey, I realize I haven't shown you all of this train yet. So here is the dining car. If you are known with my videos, you know that I absolutely love dining cars. Even though dining cars are not the cheapest way of enjoying food on board of a train, there's just something magical about a dining car on board of a train. What is the most typical Norwegian thing you have on the menu? The cinnamon rolls. I did not record this very well, but I took the cinnamon roll that's typically from Bergen and the waffle with brown goat cheese that was really good. To summarize the food review, actually it's really good. It's really good. Apart from the sweet things I've ordered, you also find more serious meals and salads, etc. on the menu. 
If you want to drink alcohol in this train, it's only allowed in the dining car. This is due to the very strict Norwegian alcohol regulations. Traveling by train is fun, and of course for kids it's even more fun. For kids there's even a special play area, and this is the so-called family area. The area for disabled passengers is really close to this and is actually in the same carriage. Within this carriage you also find a bigger accessible toilet that can be used as a diaper changing facility for babies. The family area was pretty busy for the entire ride so I didn't film a lot over there but if you want to know more just check out the video I've made on the route from Kristiansand to Oslo where you also find for example these locomotive hall trains that are exactly the same at least for the family area. So right now we're at Finns and this is the highest railway station in Northern Europe. It's not the highest point of the line yet, it will be a little bit down the road. The train will go right in a tunnel after that. Um, makes a quick stop so I jump in the train again. The railway station of Finns is unique because this spot can only be reached by train. There are no roads to this point. After Finns the train will mainly be in tunnels. And the first station after Finse is Hallingskate, if I pronounce it right. This is built in an avalanche tunnel. From here on the train will go downwards and leave the Hardingafida mountain plateau. I haven't shown you everything on this train yet, because today I'll be traveling in plus class. What is a kind of first class? This comes just like the rest of the train in a 2x2 two two configuration, but you have more leg room. The seats can be reclined just like normal and you find power plugs between the seats. And below the seat you find another handle you can use to recline the bottom part of the seat. You find just the same amount as luggage space as in the rest of the train. However, because less people do fit in this carriage, you have netto more luggage room. I was traveling with a second class interrail and to me this is not worth the extra price. Even though the leg room is really generous and these tables, even for the airline style seats, they're really nice. I mean, if I want to work in the train from my laptop, I think this is ideal, but I'm not doing that for this journey. Well, of course, you find the regular things you can also expect in the standard class. And there are sunscreens as well, like everywhere. In plus class, free drinks are included, but yeah, that's basically what makes it plus. And for me, the leg room is also quite good in the rest of the train. By the way, free Wi-Fi is available in the entire train. It's depending on the mobile signal, so it's not that good for the entire ride. Along this railway line there are some really nice places. For example Meerdal. From Meerdal you will find the famous Flamsbana. This is the Flam railway that will go to obviously the town of Flam. This is a very touristic train and in the summertime it can be really busy on this railway line. Later on during this trip I will also take the Flamsbana so there will be a dedicated trip report for this as well. I made a kind of a looping for this section of my total journey and the next day I took from Meerdal a local train to Vos en Bergen. Of course I made a trip report on this as well. On the section Meerdal Bergen you actually find quite some local trains and for those trains you don't need to reserve a seat. However, I continued the journey with the train that I took from Oslo towards Foss and the views of the state amazing. On the route Oslo-Bergen you will find 3 to 4 long distance trains that will go at daytime per day depending on the season and there's one sleeper train per day. The sleeper train takes some more time because otherwise the journey will be a little bit too short.
right now I'm at the railway station of Vos, the train just left. Um, I will continue my way to Bergen with a local train. Um, from here on I'll take a bus to uh, Gutfang, from Gutfang a boat to Flum. And from Flum I'll take the famous Flum railway. There will be other fears about that. And from there on I will take tomorrow a local train to Bergen. Um, anyway, I hope you liked this video or this has been a helpful video to you. If so, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more trip reports about a more sustainable way of transportation, then hit the subscribe button. For now, that's really it. And see you on my next video. If you want to see the views from the train between Voss and Bergen, just check out the video on the local train between Meerdal, Voss and Bergen. You can find that video in the description of this video on YouTube. And something else you find in the description is a link to a map. And on this map, you can find all trip reports I did. See you on the next video.